Hey there, Sun Devil fans. Brad Denny with 3TV and the Speak of the Devils podcast here. Coming at you with another Fall Camp quick hit mini episode. The first mini episode from Camp Tanazona. Man, it was good to be back in the Pines. This is the uh, first of three practices that the team will have uh, this week up there at Camp T. Uh, it's the first time that we haven't practiced up there since 2019. Now, they have uh, had a couple of like day trips for team bonding, but really there's just way no, no way to replicate the experience of Camp T. Talk to any former player who had that experience, just like the team bonding is really kind of the primary driver there. You know, obviously you get the work in on the football field and practice, but it's really off the field where you have, you know, the big strides and, and the bonding and the growth process uh, for any new team. And, you know, I know a lot of fans like to point out no team or the Sun Devils has ever won the conference or the share of the conference side without at least going up and having practices at Camp T. So ASU now with under Kenny Dillingham is getting back to that tradition. It was good. And it's also good after covering, you know, eight, nine practices of fall camp in a row, just, you know, standing out in 110, 115 degree heat for two and a half hours to be outside and it's to be, dare I say, pleasant. It's about 80 some odd degrees, nice little breeze from time to time up at Camp T this morning. It was a uh, really great, great site, great scenery, obviously. Always great to be there. And I was talking about some of the things that actually happened on the field. Now, with these three practices open to the public, uh, they're probably keeping some of the, the more complicated things, the game planning type things, you know, a little bit uh, closer to the chest. But so we opened up today with some special teams work, and as they have been doing some perimeter work, uh, then they went into the team tempo period in the in period three, as they always do. Uh, this was you know a day that Drew or that uh, Trenton Borgay, excuse me, was getting the uh, the first reps of the two of the battle with uh, Borgay and Pine. Going, it's very continuing to be very close, and you know they've been alternating. You know one day that'll be Borgay, the next will be Pine. So expect on uh, Friday that Pine will get the nod. Uh, to start things off a little bit and you know just kind of it was a, a better day for the offense overall after a, overall the camp has been a kind of defensively dominated but offense got out to a big uh, had some great success on Tuesday's practice in Sun Devil Stadium or excuse me Mountain America Stadium uh, and then uh, but today also had some good moments for the offense as well but team tempo period was pretty pretty quiet um, a couple of quick outs from Borgay to uh, Xavier Guillory uh, kind of highlighted that drive. And then when Drew Pine came in, the defense really kind of got got after it. Tristan Monday had a sack. Garen Stansbury, who's putting together a pretty solid camp, the uh, defensive end, he had a nice pass breakup as he got into the backfield and got in Pine's face. And then uh, it, they went to uh, individual position drills, uh, position group drills for quite some time. And then went to inside run and seven on sevens. And, you know, I was over by watching the lines uh, go after each other. And yet again, Deshaun Mallory, the defensive tackle transfer from Michigan State, continues to really impress. Now, that's a, obviously a position of very crucial need. Have Still have some depth concerns overall about that. But Mallory has proven to be, uh, so far in camp, a promising addition to a group that uh, definitely needs to, uh, you know, hold together and kind of step up because I think the other pieces of the defense – are pretty uh, pretty intriguing. Uh, then they went to a, a, a team session, and there's a huge, huge hit from Caleb McCullough to, on Cam Scadaboo that actually kind of drew a the ire of Kenny Dillingham, even though it got people really fired up and, and on both on the defensive sideline especially. But he kind of reminded them that this is a full speed period, not live period. You don't want to necessarily want to get some of your key guys dinged up, but it was an explosive and very loud hit. Uh, there was a nice deep ball throw from uh, Jaden Rashada to uh, Xavier Guillory. Um, Javon Jacobs had had a, a couple of good explosive runs. Trent Borgay had a, a nice little scramble, kind of reminiscent of the old, if, if you fans remember back in 2015 when Mike Bercovici was doing a lot of RPO stuff, but never ran. And so the defense has really kind of ignored him. And then ultimately he uh, would pick his spot and uh, you know, kind of burst off a 20, 30 yard gain when uh, no one expected it. it looked like that was the case. You know, Trenton, of course, coming back from a foot injury and foot surgery last year he was really kind of playing on one foot. Now he's got two healthy feet and he's moving around much better and got some big yards there. Troy O'Meary, the wide receiver, the Texas transfer, had a very good practice, taking a, a screen from Drew Pine, made some nice open field moves and, and picked up some sizable yards, run after catching. He's starting to put together some, some good practices after perhaps a quiet start uh, to fall camp. 
Drew Pine, I thought, had a really good session near the end of practice, and there was one play that really kind of stuck out, especially uh, he was kind of flushed out of the pocket on the run to his right and kind of an off-platform throw, uh, threw a, a nice pass way downfield to Giovanni Sanders, and Gio was able to get that, haul that in for a, a huge gain. You'll hear from Gio here uh, in just a, a few moments. And then later on in that drive as they got uh, – as the uh, team session – uh, kind of came to a close. The uh, offense under Pine got to the goal line, and, and the defense was got started to stiffen up a little bit and force a fourth and goal situation. Looked like from about the two or three yard line, uh, Jordan Clark got the defensive people on the sidelines to to really get loud, and they were shouting, kind of you know, getting some more noise out there, making a little bit of life difficult for the defense. Pine took the snap, looked to his left, looked. Fired a dart in there too, and in a situation like that, there's kind of one get, one uh, guy you're going to be gunning for, and that's of course tight end Jalen Conyers made the catch and uh, touchdown for the offense to cap that drive in a solid, pretty solid day uh, for the quarterbacks. Uh, again, I think that the quarterback battle, the the big uh, storyline throughout this entire fall camp, is continue to be very close. After Trenton had a, I think a sizable lead in spring, but this is a, a very very close battle. Both quarterbacks have been. Pretty solid. Pine has continued to attack downfield, and I think that's served him well. So he's gotten back in that race. We'll see how things transpire on Friday. And, of course, a big uh, moment will be the scrimmage on Saturday. So, folks, if uh, you're heading up there uh, on Saturday scrimmage especially, it starts at 9 a.m. Definitely, definitely recommend you get there early as well. Uh, it's going to be a good time. So we'll see how the things uh, transpire there. So after this practice session, I was able to catch up with a trio of Sun Devils for some good conversations. Uh, first up, you know, if you've heard of these quick hit mini episodes, you know, I like to pay attention to the specialist as well, you know, because it isn't just an offensive defensive game. So you've, in the past, you've heard from Josh Carlson, the punter, ASU's kicker Dario Longhetta last week, and now caught up with long snapper Slater Zellers, who is, of course, a former Valley uh, High School star as well. Went off to Cal for a number of years, had success there, got to know uh, Charlie Regal, Cal Special Teams Coordinator, now ASU's Special Teams Coordinator. So it's good to catch up with, with Slater Zellers, and, and he walked us through his journey to becoming a long snapper, uh, how camp is going so far, the kind of influence of Steve Roush and the Roush Kicking Academy on the Sun Devil Specialist, and much more. So let's get to it. Here's a conversation with Slater Zellers. Camp T experiences, you know, obviously uh, – Something pretty unique in college football. Well, how's uh, the first couple days or first day or so for you? Uh, it's really unique for sure. That's to say the least. Um, I've never it's my sixth fall camp now. I've never done anything like it. So, um, but I mean, as you can see, it's beautiful up here. Um, quite the experience, you know, bunking with a bunch of guys in a room and. Um, but it's cool. It's something we're going to look back on for years and years and tell our kids about. So, how do you how do you feel the guys are kind of adjusting to the you know roughing it a little bit? You know, yeah, I think nice I think some people might be used to it a little bit. Um, okay, but. I think most guys were a little bit shocked <laughs> kind of coming here, especially right when we got here, it started pouring rain, a uh, little hail as well. So, but it's it's cool. It's really cool. I think all the guys are kind of buying into it now, and you know, had a good practice just now. So, yeah, how do you feel like fall camp's coming along for you? I think it's great. You know, I've, as you know, we have a you know new crew. Um, you know, Dario and Josh are doing great out there. Um, even the younger guys, you know, coming up, Cole, um, Race. Ian, you know, everyone's kind of gelling together, and we're all starting to kind of hit our stride here, which is good. So. What, what's it like just being back home, you know, a Valley guy coming back home and play for the hometown school? Yeah, no, it's awesome. It's great. Um, my cousin actually played at U of A, so there's a little, oh, little, okay. little rivalry there. But, um, <laughs> yeah, no, he's, it's great. It's, you know, it's a lot of fun. It's, you know, always dreamed of it. So. What were some of the, the factors, you know, to, that, that, that brought you here? Obviously, you, know, you have the connection with Charlie Regal, you know, one of my old high school coaches as a matter of fact. Yeah. Uh, and then so coming back here into the hometown, you know, why, why did you want to be a Sundell after having the success that you did at Cal? Um, you know, I, I had a great career at Cal. Um, it was a new change, new opportunity. Obviously, you mentioned Coach Regal. Um, he was, you know, a big factor. But I think just coming back home, being in front of the family um, and kind of experiencing something new, especially with Coach Dillingham, I heard a lot of great things about him. And, you know, I've, I don't regret anything now. I've, I love it out here. I love it here. So. What are some things about that kind of stick out about Coach Regal and why he's been able to have the success with specialists like he has over his career? Um, I think 
Coach Regal is just, he's a very personable guy. You get a lot of, he's a player's coach for sure. You can relate to him. So I think he's able to get guys to buy in really easily and um, want to play hard for him. And uh, he's, you know, he was a special teams coach for, I don't even know, a while at U of A now at Cal um, and now here. So, you know, he's been in the business. He's been in the in the realm of special teams for a long time. So he, he knows his way around it for sure. One of the other influences on you is uh, Steve Roush. You know, I was talking to you know to Josh and Dario, and just you know, the whole you got like his, his uh, fingerprints on kind of the, the whole of the Sun Devil Specialist. What makes him you know so successful in terms of you know, the Roush Kicking Academy? You know, just you know developing great specialists. Yeah, yeah, no, he's. Um, I was introduced to Coach Roush right when I came out here, right when I announced my transfer um, to Arizona State, and. Ever since then, I've just kind of been around, been you know working with his high school guys that he has coming up, and he's he does a really good job with those kids. He's um, very technical with them, um, and also my snapping coach Ben Bernard with Arizona Elite Long Snapping. He um, he get kind of I don't I don't know if it's a partnership, but you know he Coach Roush you know promotes the Arizona Elite guys as well, and um, we you know those snappers service his punters and kickers. He just has a really good. Um, connection going on and he's building something very great. How did you get in, involved in long snapping? Obviously it's a very you know crucial skill yeah. and just going, and not, not many people can do it. Yeah um, it was I want to say about seventh grade I was um, introduced to this um, or I was told to go to a, a Coles kicking camp um, and at the camp I went there was terrible at it. Didn't <laughs> I told my dad after I was like I do not want to do this anymore. You know I want to be done. I want to go. I was playing baseball at the time. I want to go play baseball. But um, he's like, you know, I met this coach and it ended up being Ben Bernard with Arizona Elite Long Snapping. So um, met the met him and ended up going out to checking out what he does in in Phoenix and ended up staying with it all the way through. So it's kind of credits to my dad and, and Ben Bernard, obviously. Sometimes, you know, fans might take special teams for granted just, you know, in terms of, you know, the, the snap, the hold, you know, the kicks and everything. What, what are some things that, you know, just do the, obviously a very technical uh, job that you guys have. What are some things that, you know, think the average fan should, should know about, you know, kind of long snapping, just kind of, you know, special teams in general? Um, yeah, I mean, it's not I, – I, our goal is to make it an automatic. You don't even yeah. need to think about it. Um, but unfortunately, it's not. But um, – some things you kind of got to look at is whenever a kicker misses a kick, it's not always on the kicker. Um, there can be a snap that wasn't great. Laces, the hold might have been off. Very, It's very technical. And, yes, on the surface level, you might just be like, oh, he missed the kick. That's the kicker's fault. But more times than not, there's a lot more deeper issues involved with that same thing with punting as well if, you know you're trying to you're trying to put the put the snap right it right here in his body right about his waist level um and any snap kind of off or making him move right or left could throw his timing and his steps off into into uh, his punt so what does what a successful uh, 2023 season look for you um i think for me for me personally you know just perfect snaps and um as a team though i think i think we have a lot more talent than people think here, um, and I mean, I I want to go back to a bowl game. I ultimately I want to win the Pac-12 championship. I think that would be um, something I've always dreamed of, and, and a goal that would be, you know, be very cool to experience that. And I think a lot of guys here um, would say the same thing. So ultimately, a Pac-12 championship for sure. September 30th, going back to your old stomping grounds. Yeah. What's that kind of game going to yeah. be like for you? Uh, it'll be fun. It'll be a lot of fun. <laughs> I still stay in contact with some of the guys at Cal, so, um, but it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, it'll be fun. That was one that was for sure you know, circled on the calendar <laughs> when when I uh, came here, but I'm excited for that one. It'll be, it'll be nice to just be a little bit different being on the opposite sideline, <laughs> opposite locker room, but it'll be, you know, I think it'll be a very cool experience. It's me and Dario and Coach Regal as well. So. The Sun Devil run game will be a very important component of this Kenny Dillingham Bo Baldwin offense this fall. And while Cam Scadaboo is uh, making his mark uh, coming over as an FCS transfer, Tevin White, the former four star signee, uh, is looking to get back in the race and make a big contribution to the Sun Devil backfoot now that he's fully healthy. So, got a chance to catch up with him after the first practice at Camp T. First day at Camp T, what are your initial impressions yes, of that practice yes, in the Pines? I'm loving it. Honestly, it's definitely better conditions than Arizona. You know, it's <laughs> nice up here. I don't know, it's like 90 degrees, it's windy. Sometimes you get the shade. 
really no humidity, so I'm loving up here. It's a good environment. Um, you know, it's fun out here with the teammates, not just on the field, but off the field as well. You know, just connecting. There's really no phones or anything like that, so just getting to know your teammates and stuff like that, so I'm loving it. How do you feel that, uh, you know, fall camp's going for you, you know, coming off of spring where you kind of battled a little bit of injury, but now you're, yeah. you're out there healthy. How do you, how do you feel out there, this offense? Uh, I feel pretty good. The hardest thing to come back from in terms of like not playing was just like getting back to my full speed like what I've been used to and I feel like I'm getting back up there slowly so uh, I've been feeling pretty good this fall camp um, I would just continue getting better and that's all I could do just do whatever I can for the team. How do you feel like just kind of the rotation of the running back a lot of you know talented guys you know with, with Cam kind of joining the group Javen making that switch over during the spring just you know how do you feel kind of collectively the group the group is coming along? Uh, I think it's actually complimenting the group more than so much like how the rotation is going to be like you can put Javen in for a certain package came in for a certain package we can you can even have came in for all packages the call and fall packages we're all just so versatile so I really like that about our running backs we're not just one dimensional hey, what about your packages you know what, what what kind of stuff do you feel that you're a great fit for in this offense mm -hmm. definitely open space anything I could be in open space whether it be you know catching like anything in the flats um even with uh, some G leads, some counters, just wherever I can get open field, anything where I could uh, just be myself. Yeah, what, what's it like just, you know, going, having a little bit of, a, of playing time a, a year ago, obviously a very difficult season collectively for the team, the program, and just kind of this new life and this, this new energy in the program under Kenny Dillingham. Uh, what, what, can you repeat the question? I'm sorry. But just, you know, going through like a, a difficult la season collectively last year and then what is it like just, you know, having so far, you know, seven, eight months now under mm -hmm. Kenny Dillingham, just kind of this new program culture, this new okay. energy here? Yeah, I uh, definitely feel confident. Um, and I feel like the team's giving off the energy as well, just in terms of what the energy Coach Dillingham's bringing and uh, even the coaches he's brought along with him. Um, just feeling confident going into the season. Like, I feel like last year was kind of hesitant. Not really know where we're going, but I feel like this year we're a lot confident in our team, our ability. And, you know, we're going to see how it goes this season. You know, they say a lot of players make, you know, a big jump between that first year and second year. What kind of, where do you think you've made strides kind of both on and off the field, knowing that you have that kind of a year of major college yeah. ball under your belt? Uh, definitely in my pre-snap breeze in terms of, like, IDing and blitz pickup and also catching. Um, I thought that's going to be a big part of my game if I want to get an open field. So I've been focused a lot on my catching, my, um, my pre-snap breeze and stuff like that. Uh, you know, the rest of fall camp, you know, have a couple more days up here in the Pines. What's uh, what are your some things that you'd like to get accomplished to get ready for the season opener on the 31st? Um, I say biggest things is just even if it's not tackle like tackle periods, I just want to work on getting my legs up. You know, not so much getting caught by that first and second contact. Want to break arm tackles. And I feel like it's going to transition well when we go into live periods and even if I get to play in the game this year. So that's one thing I really want to practice. You know, what, what does success look like for you in 2023? You know, what would be a successful year for Tevin White? Just one in the pack. Just in the past, all I care about. Honestly, if we come in the pack this year, especially with all these new people coming together, gelling together, I feel like that'll be an amazing thing, especially our last year in the pack. Thoughts on, you know, you, a lot of you last year in the pack, you hopefully cap that with a win, but then sure. next year in the, in the Big 12, and some new teams and new experiences. Yeah, definitely exciting. I don't know what's going to happen, <laughs> and especially in terms of like recruiting and all that stuff, but it's exciting, you know, a change, and we're just going to see how it goes from there. One of the under-the-radar battles here in fall camp has been at slot receiver where incumbent Geo Sanders has been battling it out with newcomer Melquan Stovall. Both players have looked really good, and today was a especially pretty good practice for Geo. so it's always good to catch up with him, a fellow Steelers fan, uh, as it turns out. So I had a chance to talk with him about the Camp T experience, how that, that slot battle is progressing, and some of the goals that he has for this offense this uh, season. All right, so fall camp here up at the Camp Tonizona. What's this experience like for you? Yeah, no, um, well, last year was definitely a little bit of a different experience. That was my first time coming out here, but this year, you know, with us spending the night and everything like that, it really dives into, like, the culture and tradition things of, uh, or, condition, or culture and tradition side of things, my bad. But uh, it's really nice out here. Honestly, I slept a lot better, than, uh, a lot better than I thought it would. It's <laughs> nice getting away from the hot weather, so it's pretty good. Definitely a better experience than I thought it would be. Yeah, what, what, how do you, like, how are the, you and the guys kind of, Justin, kind of roughing it a little bit? Yeah. You know, don't have those modern amenities. You know, yeah, uh, Kenny mentioned that he gives you guys about 90 minutes of phone time a day. Yeah. <laughs> nah, definitely. It was a big adjustment for the first day, but um, one thing that our, our coach, they coach uh, suggested Coach Joe, he told us to bring some uh, earplugs and then some like a sleeping mask, so it helps a lot with the light and the noise with everyone being in the cabins and everything like that. Of course, not being in your own room, you hear a lot more noise, but other than that, really getting used to the bed and things like that, it really ain't too much of a transition. You know, they brought the food trucks and stuff for us and everything yesterday, so it was, nice. it was a super nice vibe. It was a lot of team bonding. All right, so, you know, uh, you 
do the next couple of days up here as well, you know, scrimmage on, on Saturday. What are some things that you and the team kind of want to get uh, accomplished, you know, make sure that you yeah. get the full camp to experience? Yeah, no, definitely with the scrimmage is energy, effort, and physicality. Uh, that's something we always preach, especially in the receiver room. So really just, like I said, getting getting lined up quick, chasing the ball, blocking people, really just being physical and energy and effort. And then um, as far as the experience in general, like I said, really just the team bonding and culture side of things. Uh, it's nice to get away, like you said, 90 minutes with the phone. So you really, even if you don't want to, you kind of have to bond with teammates and stuff like that. So it's nice getting to know people that, that you really don't get to know. But like, you know, if, if you were just walking around the facility, just nodding and stuff like that, you really get to dive deep into others' past and really get to know somebody. What are some of the team bonding activities you're most looking forward to? Yeah, I heard that there might be a dodgeball game yeah. coming up here, obviously hiking and yeah. some nature stuff. Um, to be honest, I haven't heard much. They try to keep the Sun Devil Olympics and everything like that under wraps about what we're doing. I have heard about the dodgeball tournament. I'm definitely looking forward to that. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Not really looking forward to the hike. I did it last year. I'm, I'm ready for it, but that thing's a little treacherous. My leg's a little tired, but I'm ready to chill with my homies and things like that. But uh, other than the dodgeball tournament, I like the campfires a lot. I think the campfires are super cool. Like I said, y yesterday we did with our position groups, but today we're going to do it with like a little Sunday Olympic group. So that's definitely going to be people from different positions, different age groups and things like that. So like I said, I'm really looking forward to diving in and getting to know people I don't know. All right, so you, midway through the, the second week of fall camp, you know, overall, you know, these last, like, you know, 10, 12 days or so, how do you feel like you kind of made some strides? Yeah, um, I feel like I made some strides, definitely. I definitely feel like I could be more physical. Um, I think my strain got a lot better, that Coach Sampy saying. Uh, like I said, getting lined up quick, chasing the ball and things like that. But I feel like I put together a pretty good fall camp, but I definitely think I, uh, I need to do a lot more. How are you feeling com kind of comfort-wise in this offense? You know, obviously going through spring ball and kind of learning in the, the summer and just, you know, now that you're getting out here in fall camp, how do you feel it's the offensive, you know, cohesion and yeah. comfort is coming along? I think it definitely has grew a lot. I think people are starting to have a lot less uh, bust is what we call them when you mess up a player and things like that. I think for as a whole, as a unit, I think we're getting a lot more comfortable and like I said, we're playing a lot more strain. As for me, I think I have a pretty good grasp of the offense. I'm not going to lie. I feel like if they put me at X, Z, or a, or, or a, even H, if it's not a block in the summer, I feel like I pretty much know the whole playbook. <laughs> The, the, you know, it seems like yeah, you and uh, Melquan getting a nice competition at, at the slot. You know, what's that like? You know, just like you know, being teammates and supporting each other, but also yeah. kind, of, kind of vying for that role. Yeah, no, it's definitely. I love it. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm definitely a guy who strives off competition. So I love that me and him go back and forth to each other. And like you said, me and Melquan, we definitely close. And we got a lot close over fall camp and things like that. So like, he, like you said, we get. Ha or I get happy when he makes plays, and he gets happy when I make plays. So it's a good competition, but it's also a good relationship between us. Quarterback battles kind of taking center stage, obviously, and not yet knowing exactly who that QB one is going to be and just you know, with the rotation just again one day is kind of more Trent and one day is more uh, Drew what's it like from a receiver's perspective just you know not having that one guy as of yet to kind of lock in and build that rapport exclusively with yeah um really for a receiver at least for me um shoot I'm just happy to be out there I really just <laughs> want the ball so whoever's throwing me the ball I'm really happy so it's really just lining up and doing my job because at the end of the day they're going to do their job and as long as they do the do the things they need to do correct and I do the things I need to do correct everything's going to work out it seems like you know every quarterback throws a, a unique ball you know just kind of a little, little in, unique signature to each what's a Trent ball look like compared to a Drew ball yeah um I think Drew has a little more like I would say like a, a Arc on it, you know, a little more distance, I guess you could say. Like, uh, if 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 Trent throw it, he more gonna be like this. If Drew throw it, more gonna be like that. That's the best way I could put it. I'm not gonna lie to you. Oh, you know, the next uh, couple weeks leading up to the open on the 31st, what are the things that you want to make sure you get done to get, make sure you're ready for the 31st against Southern Utah? Yeah, no, really just going back to that physicality and the strain. Um, on top of that, be you know, chasing the ball, blocking and things like that, really just putting on a little more weight. Um, of course, fall camp comes around, you're going to lose a little bit. I went to like 180 this morning. Hopefully I get back to that 185, 190 range before the first game. And then other than that, really just my run after catch. Uh, I think I have a pretty good, like, hands. I think I catch almost mostly everything that comes my way. So really just once I do catch that ball, you know, getting more, more yards, and more touchdowns and things like that to help the team. What's a successful 2023 look like for you? Again, obviously, you had the breakout season a year ago. How yeah. you what do you want to do to follow it up? Shoot, I want to have an even a bigger breakout year. I want to lead the Pac-12, the nation, whatever I can lead in, in every receiving stats. And as far as the team, I really just want to win a Pac-12 and make history. Uh, this is the last year the Pac-12 is going to be together. We had, Why not us? That's what I think. You know, every year there's a team who, who comes and blows it up. Washington last year was ranked super low, and they came out of nowhere and blew it up. They had a new coaching staff. They had some player transferring and things like that. So my motto is always, why not us? Literally, I, I really just want to make history with this team.